Hello to all you budding coders out there. I'm Professor Cody, and it's time to code a Fang Dabadozi game. The game is a Pac-Man style game. Pac-Man must eat all the dots inside an enclosed maze while avoiding the four different coloured ghosts. Remember, if you like making this game, give it a big Professor Cody thumbs up. And why don't you subscribe to this channel so that you'll be the first to hear about our new games videos. Now, let's start by opening the Scratch game template in the link in the description below this video. Select C inside and you'll find the sprites have been created to help you to complete the project. Now first get the green flag block and then we need a forever block. What we're going to do is we're going to program the movements of the Pac-Man sprite. So we're going to get an if and first of all we're going to see what happens if the up arrow is pressed. First of all, so let's change that there to up arrow. And now we need a pointing direction. Let's get that. And this one will be pointing in direction zero. And it will be moving five steps. So let's put that in there and change it to five. Now we're going to duplicate this. And we're going to make the down arrow now. So let's just change this to down arrow. And this will be pointing direction 180. So let's change that. And now we need to do the left arrow and the right arrow. So let's duplicate this again, just by clicking at the top here. And we change this to left arrow. And that's going to be pointing in direction minus 90. And now let's do the right arrow. And that's pointing in direction 90. OK. Now what we need to do is make sure the Pac-Man sprite stays within the black borders of the maze. So we get another if. And this time, if it's touching the color of the maze, we need to do something. So let's get the color of the maze first. So let's just choose the color chooser there and click on that. And that gets us the color of the maze. So if it's touching the color of the maze, what we want to happen is that it moves minus five steps. So it goes backwards when it touches the edge. OK, let's move it around. This looks good. Moving fine. I like it a lot. Now, what we need to do now is get the red ghost moving as well. So we're going to get a green flag block and we need to show it at the beginning of the game. So let's get a show and then a forever. And we're going to make it move a bit along a particular path over and over again. So that's why we got the forever there. So it needs to start at a particular location. So we're going to get a uh, go to X and go to Y first of all. Let's start at 183 and 125. All the ghosts will be very similar to this. Now we're going to get a glide. So let's go to the uh, motion area here. And we're going to glide it and pick a random number. So basically it will glide uh, for a different length of time. So it may glide faster and it may glide slower. So let's make that 183 and minus 47. OK, excellent. We're going to duplicate that. OK, duplicate it again. So now we have four and duplicate it again. Now we have eight. And what we need to do now is change the numbers. So you can see it's 145, that particular one. And look at the numbers, how they've been changed. So if you're not sure, wait till it's finished and freeze it so you can see all of the numbers. There we go, the last one. OK, let's move it into position. Click the green flag. And off the red ghost goes. It moves in the directions as shown in the blocks of code. 
and it might move faster and it might move slower because of the pick random number. Okay, what we're going to do now is repeat the same thing for the green ghost and the blue ghost and the purple ghost. So freeze the screen so you can see what you have to do for each. Now that we're moving, you can see we've got all the ghosts moving. Ok now we're going to position the coins or dots, to do this we need to make a block. So we make a block, we're going to call it location 1. This is for coin 1 sprite. Ok so let's put that there. So we're now going to define this particular block, it's like a function. So we need to show it first of all, so let's get the show block here. And we need to make sure it's on the front layer so it doesn't go behind the maze. So let's choose that now, go to front layer and then we're going to get uh, a variable and we're going to set the coin location to pick a random number 1 to 5. So what will happen is the coin when it starts the game will go into a different location and there will be a choice of 5 different locations. Ok so let's get the pick a random number and make that 1 to 5. So now what we need to do is decide what happens when it gets to each of the locations. So first of all, if coin location equals 1, so let's get the variable there. If coin location, if coin 1 location equals 1, we have to say what happens. So it goes to a particular location. So we put that in here, and this time it's minus 99 and 75. Put those numbers in. So we have to make five of these. So we've got somewhere for it to go for each location. So let's duplicate this. Okay, duplicate it again. Okay, and we need one more because we need five locations. Just move that up here. So we're going to duplicate the last one again. So now we have five. And what we need to do now is change the numbers so that each one is going to a different location. So two, three, four, and five. And we need to change the coordinates of each of these. So the second one will go to 22, 13. The third one will go to 186, minus 44. The fourth one will go to minus 15, minus 106. And the last one will go to 1, minus 138, minus 14. What we do now is get another green flag block and we put location 1. So what happens there is it will actually run the, uh, the function or the block. So it will do whatever it says. So whatever there is in the block there, it will follow those instructions. Now we need to go to the second coin or second dot and do the same thing again. So what we're doing is we're making another block here so that it goes, it, we're defining location 2 this time. So we define location 2 and what we're doing is we're dragging that across so that uh, we have the code for these locations then we just need to change the numbers. So we now have the same code for all of them but with the numbers being the same it doesn't work so we need to go back here, change the variables for each one. So it gets rid of the variables Add the new variables, so we have three variables. The second one is coin2 location and the third one is coin3 location. So we put those in there and then we change all of the numbers. Okay, change these numbers. And again the same thing, when the green flag is pressed, what happens then is we need to run the program. And it runs whatever's in the function or the block that we've made. We repeat this for coin 2 and coin 3. So now we have done coin 2 and coin 3. They will go to different locations 
and it'd be a random location each time. So it might go to that, that location two, it might go to location three, location one, location four. As you can see, they've just gone to a random location and press the green flag again and they will go to another random location. That's working really good. There we go, different location each time. Now what we have to do is make uh, another block of code to say what happens if the coin is touching the Pac-Man. So we get the green flag block, a forever block. If it is touching Pac-Man, then what happens is, first of all, we need to change the score by one. So let's get that now, change score by one. Okay, so let's change score by one. We now make a sound so that whenever the, so whenever Pac-Man reaches the coin, it makes a chomping sound. Now we need to, after that, we need to hide it it's been eaten so it will disappear then we wait five seconds and then it goes back to start the location one function all over again so we add to the end of it location one so let's go to the blocks area and then add location one there so now each time pac-man eats a coin you score one point let's copy that to coin two and to coin three so they also have the same code. We need to change the code a little bit before we carry on. So if touching Pac-Man, it stays the same. But this time we need to put a different block in the bottom there. So it's location two. And the third one will be location three. So we'll move that over to there. And we have them completed now. Very good. Now what we need to decide to do is what happens if the ghost catches Pac-Man. So we get the green flag block, a forever block, and then we need an if. And if the ghost is touching Pac-Man, we need to decide what happens. So let's just choose that there. And if it is touching Pac-Man, then we need to lose a life. So there you start the game with three lives, and each time you touch him, you lose a life. So let's do it there. And then we change the variable life by minus one. Then we choose hide. And then we start the sound, Alien Creek 2. We then need to wait for a little bit. So let's wait three seconds, put three seconds there. And once we've waited three seconds, we then show the ghost again. So it disappears once it's touched the Pac-Man and then it will reappear again. So we copy this code across to all of the ghosts the green ghost, the blue ghost, the purple ghost. Okay. That looks good. Move that across to there. So now each ghost, if they touch the Pac-Man, the, the lives will go down by one. So now we go back to Pac-Man. And we get the green flag block. And then we need to go a show, so we show the Pac-Man at the beginning of the game. And we need to start the game by setting the score to zero. And we set the lives to three. So score is zero. And then we move that. And then we make the lives three. And we also need to move Pac-Man to a particular location at the beginning of the game. So let's just choose a location for Pac-Man. Put that in there. Let's make it minus 19, minus 17. Now what we're going to do is make Pac-Man look as though he's moving. So we're going to get the forever. 
and we're going to use different costumes. So Pac-Man has two costumes. So we're going to choose next costume there so it goes from one costume to the other. And we need a slight delay in time there so we're going to get a wait and it will be 0 0.2 seconds. So it will wait for 0 0.2 seconds and it will keep changing costumes. Now, we need to say what will happen at the end of the game. So if the lives is less than one, then we need to finish the game. So we need to get the variable lives, put it in there, and then make it less than one. So if lives is less than one, the game is over. So we need to broadcast, game is over. So let's just do that here. We get broadcast, game is over. So in here, you can make a new message if game over is not there, and make a message that says game over. Okay, excellent. Now what we need to do is when I receive game over, we need to hide uh, Pac-Man, because that's the end of the game, so we need to hide him. We copy that, go to all of the other sprites, so that at the end of the game, we don't see them. Okay, let's just keep going. Copy that across here. Copy that to the coins. So they would all disappear at the end of the game. Okay, now, for the Pac-Man, when I receive game over, we need to say what happens, and it starts to sound emotional piano. So you hear a particular song at the end of the game. It would also tell you your score, so we go here, say, and it will say the score for two seconds. We're going to use a join here so we can say the variable name. So we put the variable in here, which is score, and we can say your score is and then we use the variable to show the score. So let's get that now. We do that for two seconds. And then once that's happened, we need to hide it. So we go to hide here. And then we wait five seconds and we stop everything. So let's just wait five seconds here. Make it five. And then we use stop all to stop everything. That's it. Excellent. Now, the last thing we do is go to the backdrop here. And what we need to do is say what happens when the game is over on the backdrop. So we go to when I receive game over. We're going to switch the backdrop to an end of game backdrop. So let's just choose that now. And we're going to choose game over as the backdrop. And then we'll stop other scripts in the sprite. So stop. And we'll change that to other scripts in the sprite. So that's the end of the game. I hope you've enjoyed it. What I'd like to do now is have a go at some of the challenges. Have you completed the challenges or even made your own Fan Dabadozi game? Well done! Now put a link to the game in the comments below or if there is a game you'd like to learn how to code again, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. Well. It's a great big Arrivederci from Professor Cody. Until next time.